Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today we are going to be working on the desk behind me. I have been meaning to paint this desk for years. Actually, when I first got it, that was my intention and I was going to paint it white, but then I painted a dresser white and I didn't really like the way that looked against the paint on the walls. It's a rental house. I can't do anything with the wall paint. So I just left it as is. And now I feel like I'm like ready to finally paint it. So it's not in the best of shape. I actually like, there's like a hutch right here and it's, or shelves, I don't know. It doesn't actually go to the desk, but um, I thought it fit okay and I like decorating it. So I'm gonna keep it like this, but we're gonna sand it down and paint it. I'll show you real fast what the paint color is and then what I plan to do with this. Honestly, I don't have, I don't have a set plan. Like I think I know what I wanna do with it, but I'm just not sure. It might change along the journey, so bear with me, but uh, definitely today I want to start sanding it and filling some of it with some wood filler. So I'm going to show you the desk real fast so you can see what we're working with. Okay, so here is the desk. This is, I had gotten it in an antique um, mall. This desk, obviously, I don't know if you can tell, but it used to have, not when I bought it, but the way it originally was, this would have been one like flat desk and there would have been a lid that you lift up to get into the inside. When I bought it, it didn't have that and someone had come in and like filled this poorly, I might add, with like wood filler, I guess. I don't know, it looks terrible. It's not even even, but um, it was like really inexpensive and it worked for what I wanted, so I got it. So the desk is literally like flat here and it should have had the little shelf. Um, it's not going to have the little top part. I'm not adding that. I like it as is. And then there is this shelf thing that I always call a hutch. I don't know what it technically is, but I also found this separately at the antique mall. And um, so I'm gonna paint that. Now, right now there's like this scrapbook paper on the back of um, the shelf, just because I had wanted to lighten this up because it seems so dark and heavy, especially like my cabinets are not light. And this is a small like kitchen dining room area. So my goal was to keep it as light as I could. And so that's why I put that scrapbook paper in there, but it's like kind of gnarly now. Like I'll try to show you really fast, but um, like, I don't know if you can see, let's take this off. Like behind my mirror, look at the scrapbook paper. I don't even know what happened. That's probably from sunlight, I guess. So that needs to be addressed. Um, but I do still want to keep the back of these shelves different than the actual desk. So I got this like contact paper from Amazon. It's just like, it's like an off-white background and then it's got gold. I don't know how like, well you can see it, um, but it's kind of like a matte gold. It's not super shiny. And I thought that that would look pretty, but like the longer I've sat and thought about this, I'm not sure that this is the pattern I want, like this tall pattern or whatever you want to call it. So I did order a second contact paper that's supposed to come in today. And then I'm going to decide what I want to do with it, but this will potentially go on the back. <laughs> and like all of this stuff basically needs to be like sanded and filled. It's not in the best of shape. A long time ago, I had an uh, antique pencil sharpener that I had screwed into this. Um, so that the kids could sharpen their pencils. <laughs> and so I took that out, so I have to fill those holes. And then this is the paint color I was going with. So I picked this up at Lowe's. It is, um, I just got Valspar paint. The color is called Glass Tile. And I just thought this was like a really pretty, kind of a cross between a blue and green. So my, you know, one of the main colors in my house is like this green, but I really love blues. So I wanted to be able to go either way. So I thought this was kind of like a good uh, in-between color and it's light enough that I think it'll look nice against the wall, but will lighten up like the dining room considerably, I'm hoping. So that is what we are working with. I'm gonna clean off my desk now. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. And then we'll get to work sanding. I don't know if I can get I don't think I can get it all done in one day. It's kind of nasty outside. The Weather Channel says it's not going to rain. 
I don't believe them. So I'm going to get as far as I can today and then we'll kind of see from there. So like I said, I'm going to start by going ahead and cleaning this off. I just brought up a box from the basement and I'm just going to load everything in here. One of the reasons this took me so long to actually do this project was just the thought of un like loading the desk and then all the sanding was completely overwhelming to me. But then once I actually did it, it really wasn't that bad. So I don't know why I put this off for so long. That was insane, but whatever. I'm so glad I'm actually tackling this and taking care of it because I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. You'll see it at the end, but um, it's actually a really big difference. Okay guys, so here it is basically down to the way it was when I bought it, except it did have like hardwood handles. <laughs> I've switched those. Um, but even like as I was taking things apart, I noticed that this is not even centered. So I'm gonna have to fix that when I get to redo this. Um, and oh, also the reason there's like dents in this is this pulls out, which is really kind of cool. So this is like a good little computer desk. As you can see, there's like water damage and there's like this little hidden drawer, which you could see that my pens and such were in. So it's a really, really cool desk. I really like it, but you can see just like how dark it is overall and why I kind of want to redo it. So I'm like torn though, because I really like it <laughs> as is, but these are not like valuable pieces in by any stretch. So I'm just going to paint it. So anyways, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and then get it sanded. I'm underneath my desk here. I'm <laughs> just trying to figure out how this thing is put together. But um, I don't know what these two screws are. Oh, these two screws hold in this like back plate. This is the desk that moves forward. And then these are like two little rubber stoppers that just screw in. And then these little wood pieces under here look like they screw in. Oh, look. H.E. Shaw Furniture Co. Grand Rapids, Michigan. I should look that up. But that's the original label, furniture label. Um, the reason I'm looking at this is because I'm pretty sure that like part where you can keep envelopes and like letter stuff, I think you can get that out. And I want to save it, but I wouldn't mind getting it out so that I could paint it easier. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove some of these screws and see if I can get it out. I don't know. At least I should be able to put it back together if it doesn't work, so. Of course, the way you remove that thing is not from underneath the desk. It took me a good 15 minutes to figure that out, but whatever, at least I figured it out. Um, I ended up looking up this desk just because I was curious once I saw that label. I found so many of these desks, not exactly like this, but they were so beautiful. They go for around three to $700 when they're actually complete and in good shape. Mine is completely not um, in good shape. It doesn't have all the pieces and it has some cracks and things in some other places. So 
that actually made me feel a little bit better about redoing it just because I get a little bit funny about antiques and I didn't want to like ruin the value of it. Thankfully, this is not worth anything, so I don't have a problem painting it. I found these two little things inside the dresser. They almost look like like little turtle feet from some sort of um, knickknack. I don't know. I just thought that was so funny. You know, some kid probably broke their mom's like ceramic turtle <laughs> and that, and stuffed them in there so that they wouldn't find it. So that's hilarious. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and sand this down. All I wanted to do was not take off the actual like color of the stain and stuff. Like I didn't want to get down to the original wood. I just wanted to basically get off the like gloss or what was probably polyurethane just like get down to um, some of the wood. And I didn't do like a perfect job on it because let's face it, sanding takes 8,000 years. Um, and I'm just really not that concerned about um, chipping and things like that because I can touch it up over time. This desk is meant for me not like to sell or anything like that. So I just am not that concerned about um, like how great my uh, sanding job was. And it took me a very long time to do it just as it was. But I did want to talk about the desk a little bit. So when I looked it up, I found out that these desks were made between like 1911 and 1932. So my desk is probably near 100 years old, which is so cool. So when I found those little feet to the turtle, I just imagined that that was so many years ago. And the history that this desk probably has is so cool to think about. One of the things that I like to do when I antique shop is I'm not looking for valuable furniture or pieces. I am just looking for pieces that I will love and I will enjoy. And almost always I get something like this that's like broken or missing pieces just because um, for one, it's less expensive. And for two, I feel like other people don't value it as much as I will. And I will still get lots of use out of it and love it just the way it is. And I think that there's something really special about uh, having furniture and like antique pieces like that, that nobody else would want, but I do. And I don't know, I'm weird like that, I suppose. But um, anyway, back to the actual project. Uh, once I sanded it, I went ahead and filled in the spots on it that are like really damaged, if that makes sense. And I'll go into it a little bit more. Once that filler was dry, I went ahead and gave that a light sanding with a sanding block as well so that it is ready to paint. One of the really, really cool things about this desk is that there are so many different like drawers and nooks and crannies in it. Uh, it's one of the reasons I bought it in the first place. I just thought it was beautiful and I thought it was super functional. They just don't make furniture like this anymore. I know you've probably heard that 500 times because that's what everybody says, but it's true. Uh, the only bad thing was it was that much harder to actually complete this project because I had to sand all of those different pieces and paint all of those different pieces and stuff. But honestly, once I got into it, it really wasn't that bad. It did take a couple of days, but it was just parts of my days and it was so exciting to see it like come together. I'm just so glad I finally did this. Okay, so quick progress report on the desk. I've got it all the way sanded, except for the hutch part, like the shelf part that's separate. I'm just working on the desk right now. And then I've got um, it filled in like the major dents. I didn't fill all of them because I kind of like the dents. You know, it's part of the history of the desk. So I don't want to like fill in all that stuff, but like 
the parts where it was like cracked, really badly dented, like the parts where those screws were in the top where whoever had filled it had done a terrible job, that kind of stuff I wanted to like even out. But overall, I don't like want all the dings and dents out. So I just like filled the major ones basically. And then I filled the hole for that little drawer where it's like off center. And that was done by the manufacturer, but like I wanna fix it because I don't know why it was off center in the first place. So I filled that. I have to wait for some of that stuff to dry. Part of it is dried and sanded. Um, so I'm gonna start painting, I think, the parts that are dry and then wait for the other parts so that I can sand down that wood filler. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with my progress. So I'm not gonna get it all done today by any means, but it'll probably take a couple of days, but I don't know, I'm kind of excited. So my original plan was to keep the inside of those like envelope slots the dark color. I hope this is making sense. Uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to like paint the edges of or the front of those envelope slots and then leave the inside of it dark so you would get that peak of the original color and then in the inside of the drawers I'm leaving all of that original and that's why like on these small drawers that I'm working on right now, I'm being careful to just paint that front wood piece because I do want that original wood. The problem was when I went to go paint this envelope part, I'm just gonna refer to it as that. I don't know what it's actually called. Um, the paint just kept dripping down into it and there was no way for me to like wipe it up and I don't know. I just couldn't do it without making a big mess and it not working. I don't know how people do that, but it wasn't realistic for me. So I did end up painting the whole inside. I'm actually really glad I did because once it's all said and done, I don't know that it would have made sense to have that dark inside just because there was no other dark that you could see, if that makes sense, because the rest of it was painted and all the dark original wood is in the inside of the drawers. So I'm glad I ended up painting it anyway. And I'm also glad I was able to remove this because it really gave me um, like an easier time to paint the inside of this. I could do like a really good job. And also the back of the desk or the back of this envelope part is the back of the desk, like it's attached to the desk. I know I'm not making any sense, but like I was able to paint that very easily as well. Whereas if I didn't take that piece out, I might not have been able to reach that to paint it in the back. So it all worked out good. It was kind of cool to see how it was all put together. Also, whoever like comes up with this kind of furniture is genius in my mind. I just, I don't know how they come up with how these things are built and I don't know. It's really stinking cool. So this is a very fun project. Hopefully you're learning a little bit. I don't know if you guys redo furniture or not, or if you're just wanting to see somebody do it for fun. Uh, I don't redo furniture a whole lot, but I have done a few pieces. I actually, the side table in my master bedroom is actually a antique uh, instrument cabinet. I don't really have much history on it, except for that's just what it was labeled. And it's got like ball bearing drawers and everything where it slides out. And I painted that years and years ago. Love that piece. I'll probably keep it forever just because I get addicted to these kinds of things. But um, I don't know. I'm not an expert in redoing furniture, but I do like to try to um, update stuff every so often. And as I do it, I will include you guys. I also have like a desk chair that goes with this uh, that you'll see. And um, I'm going to end up reupholstering that too, because it looks absolutely ridiculous once this desk is painted. Um, so it needs an update. So that will be a future video. I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but hopefully when the weather's nice, because I have to do it outside since I'm using a staple gun and my husband works from home, I do not want to staple in the house. So subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss that video in the future. Okay guys, we are officially done with the first coat. Uh, it covered pretty good, but it definitely needs a second coat, especially since it was so dark. That's the like slide out desk part that sits in here. This is like the envelope part that sits up. 
and then there's like a little drawer that goes in there and then that's the little hidden desk that goes like on the bottom here so um i'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and then i'll do a second coat probably not gonna film that just because who wants to see me painting for five thousand hours but i'll come back and check in with you after the second coat and we'll see how it is okay guys today is day two i've touched up the desk um i did the second coat and then i did like a couple of touch-ups where i kind of missed stuff because <laughs> i always miss stuff but look how good it looks um i can't decide if i should paint like the sides of this i know you won't see it um so i think i might just leave it be i don't know but i'm definitely not painting the insides of the drawers um i'm gonna leave that and I still have to get hardware. Um, and my other contact paper never came, but I have this. I actually think that that might look really pretty once it's all said and done. So, but I'm really happy with how it um, is turning out. So that obviously goes up in here. And then this is the desk that slides in and out right here. So once it's all dry, I'm gonna do a coat of polyurethane and then I will put it all back together once that has dried. But today I'm going to go ahead and work on the shelf. So I'm going to get started on that. So this is just more of the same. Obviously, I'm going to sand it down the same way I did the desk. And then I'm going to paint it. I didn't have to fill in anything on this. This uh, shelf, for lack of a better word, did not have any kind of furniture label on it or anything. So I have no idea how old it is, where it's from, or any of that stuff. Um, I don't know if it's... I doubt it's as old as my actual desk. Um, and I'm really not sure what this furniture piece was. It's kind of like this odd short shelf and I'm not sure if it was a part of something prior or if it was meant to be just like a little floor shelf. I don't know. I saw it, I think it was like $30 years ago. I was going to use it to put some china on it. But at the time we had a black lab and I had set it all up nicely and had it all decorated and beautiful. And my dog would just like come along with her big tail and knock everything off. And so I couldn't use it anymore. Hey guys, we are back with day three. I have all the painting done. Today we're gonna go ahead and do the polyurethane, but I'm also going to, sorry about the neighbor, <laughs> they're blowing. Um, I'm also going to paint the like very bottom of the legs of the desk gold. I had been kind of going back and forth on if I wanted to do that, but as it's gotten painted, I decided I, I think I want to do that. So only problem is I don't have any painter's tape. So I'm gonna use masking tape and hope that doesn't like mess up the paint on the rest of the legs, but I'm gonna spray paint those legs first and then start polyurethaning all of the other spots until that spray paint is dry. Um, and then it needs probably a good 24 hours or so to set up before I can put all my stuff back in it. But I'm so excited at how it's coming along. Let me just show you how it is after like the two coats of paint. I did also do a little bit of touch up after the two coats if I like missed any spots because I always do. So, but this is two full coats and then a little bit of touch up. So here's the back of the desk, as you can see, and then the little like envelope parts. I'm gonna go try to find a little handle for this today. I can't find anything online that's small enough for that little drawer. Um, and then I do have a couple of um, gold handles that I have from when we redid my daughter's room that I'm gonna use for that. Uh, that's the drawer. I just love the way these details are turning out. I mean, just like the scroll work. My gosh, this is just such a pretty desk. Um, the legs look how good oh my gosh i'm so happy with how this is turning out and then there's the sliding desk part those are the two shelves to the actual bookshelf which is over here i'm sorry my porch is small so it's really kind of hard to show you i did not do a second coat on the backs of these because i know i'm putting that contact paper in there but i didn't want to leave it dark because i thought that that would show through the contact paper so i just gave it one quick coat and double coated everything else so that's where we're at i'm going to go ahead and tape off these legs that's why i didn't go down to the bottom so i'm going to tape off those spray paint those gold and then polyurethane it
So this is the polyurethane I'm going to use just because I had it on hand from like another project. And it says to do like three coats to use a synthetic bristle brush. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and then I have to let it dry like two to three hours in between each coat. And then a minimum of 24 hours after the final coat and three days before I use it regularly. So that is what I'm going to do. So with the polyurethane, I think it's really important to just do a very, very, very thin coat, like as thin as you can get it, use as little product as you can, because it will actually drip and um, I don't know, it's just, it's quicker to dry when it's thin. It also just like looks nicer on the piece. And then you do have to just watch the edges as you're painting. Um, because every time you hit an edge, there will be like a little drip. So you'll have to like clean that up. So I was really careful to like look at all the corners and just double check that nothing was dripping because I didn't want to have those like issues. But I think polyurethane is a very important step for painted furniture because if you don't do it, it's like the paint sticks to itself. But polyurethane will actually help the drawers and things glide very smoothly. So I'm really glad I took the time to actually do this step. So I finished polyurethaning it. I did, I ended up doing just two coats instead of three. It actually feels really good. It's dry now, but it still needs to like cure. But what I wanna do since it's dry is go ahead and put the backing on. So I have two different kinds. Like I ordered this recently from Amazon thinking that maybe I wouldn't wanna go so bold with it, but I think that this almost blends in too much and it's not gonna stand out like I'm gonna want it to, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with my original thoughts, which was this. Um, the only reason I kind of was thinking not this is it's so like, it feels very French country to me, which is not my style necessarily. I feel like my style is traditional. So I don't know, it's just gonna be the backdrop of the shelf, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but I still like this and I think it's pretty and with the gold accents on the desk, I think it's gonna look nice. So, I don't know, that's what I'm gonna go ahead with. So I'm just gonna measure it out and then figure out exactly how I wanna put it on here. So forgive me for not giving instructions on how to do this in a like good way, but let me just say that I spent a good 15, 20 minutes trying to do this center part and having to tear up <laughs> the piece that I just put on it you can see it over there by the like wall. That's the piece I had originally used. And this one I'm doing right now is my second piece. So clearly I'm not great at contact paper. I have the worst time trying to get it on straight. I don't know how people do it, but when you've got like, you have to cut it down to size because otherwise it's like too hard to put on. But then like, how do you keep it straight so that you're actually getting it edge to edge when you first start it? I don't, it's like nearly impossible for me. So I just kept working it and working it. And finally I ended up getting it on. I'm making it look a lot easier than it really was right here. Um, but listen, if I can do it, you can do it. Once it's like on there though, I am just taking this X-Acto knife and my little scraper that I used to put it on, you can use a credit card or whatever. I'm like pushing that up against the corner and then dragging the X-Acto knife along with it. That way my X-Acto knife gives a straight line. You'll see a close-up of it in just a second so that you can see a little bit more how I'm doing it. But this just made it easier for me to cut it and not have to worry about me accidentally like missing the corner and messing up the line, if that makes sense. So it just gave me a really, really clean cut, which is what I wanted. <laughs> I got it done. I honestly can't believe I got it done <laughs> because um, that was hard. I don't know what it is about putting contact paper inside of like boxes basically, but it's dang near impossible. And I struggle every single time, drawer liners, like backs of shelves. Oh, I don't know, I just struggle. So 
that is done. Doesn't it look pretty? It looks so pretty. So the next thing I need to do is go ahead and put these handles on. I got these a couple of months ago. Actually, it's been almost a year now that I think about it for my daughter's like nightstand and it was a pack of four. So, and I only needed two, so I have two left. So I'm gonna do these. It's got like this little circle pull on it. I'm gonna put these here. And then I went to the antique mall today and picked up this little drawer pull that will go here. Uh, I know it doesn't exactly match or whatever, but I couldn't find something that was the right size for this. So I figured that will work. And then I have to put that back in here and the little desk sliding thing in and it will be done. So I'm gonna get that started. can't believe it's done. It's so stinking pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with it. I cannot wait to decorate it. I'm going to decorate it and then I'll show you it all styled at the end so you can see exactly how it turned out. But I am in love with this.